What is astral projecting? What is lucid dreaming, darling? Are they the same? Are they not? I get these questions all the time, asking about how to lucid dream or how to astral project throughout the years of being in the spiritual community. And I've kind of learned before I even answer their question is to ask them, well, what does astral projecting mean to you? What does lucid dreaming even look like to you when you're asking me this question? What do you think this concept is like? I feel like it's important to ask these questions because people's definition on these two processes are very different to one another. Sometimes they're coincided and mixed and mingled and kind of considered the same thing. Other times people, people will say that they're completely different things. So in this video, it's my goal to break down astral projecting and lucid dreaming and to kind of figure out the question, are they the same or are they different? But before we even get into if comparing them, I feel like it's important for me to speak my perspective and tell you guys my understanding of both of these concepts. What is lucid dreaming to me? To me, I see this concept as when you are already asleep, at some point during your sleeping process, you become lucid or become aware of the fact that you're actually dreaming. And so it's because of this awareness of you being aware that you're sleeping is when you're able to start controlling the environment around you. For example, it, the most common thing people will say when they first realize that they're lucid dreaming is they will immediately go to trying to fly and flying around and exploring the environments around them. It's actually pretty common for people to say during this lucid dreaming state, that they will also even go to the moon, for example, or the sun and explore the environments there. That's where I kind of believe some of the concepts or beliefs some people have about aliens existing or there's being like bases on the moon and uh, so many of the conspiracy theories and concepts that are talked about today. It's also during this state, I feel like it's important to point out that that is when spiritual beings, entities, otherworldly beings, whatever it is you believe in, ghost spirits, this is when you, the, it is easier for them to relay any type of message to you for you to be, for them to connect to you is when you are in the state of lucid dreaming. To master lucid dreaming is a talent in of itself. Heck, even to be able to lucid dream uh, more often than just on the rare occasion that it just sometimes happen is a talent in of itself. It is also often the most sought after skill to develop for most people. While I couldn't find any specific fact or overall agreement as to why we actually have dreams, why we, our brain goes through this process, the general consensus is for us to be dreaming is that it's during this time that the brain is processing information, having like a information dump and just, you know, going through some type of information, darling, that our brain just, our little noggin just is constantly receiving, right? So to me, lucid dreaming is a very physical experience in the sense that we are relying on a physical organ that is in our body to give us this experience of dreaming itself. So for us to become aware during this, it's still reliant on a physical organ that is producing this experience for us. I make this very this distinction of it being a physical experience for a reason. So I want you to take note of this as we continue on in this video. astral projecting is to me is the concept where your physical body is completely asleep but your consciousness is awake it's alert and it's during this time where your physical body is asleep that your consciousness starts to disconnect from your physical body begin to leave your physical body and it's during this process that you're able to even look at yourself during this dis disconnect process and then just the same as lucid dreaming you're no longer confined to the sh sh the normal restraints that we go through through in our every day. You're able to explore freely just the same, but you are also able to, just the same as in lucid dreaming, communicate with other entities. But it's a lot easier to just because you're able to explore the other realms or so this concept can feeds into this narrative at least. Actually with this concept that I'm the most personally familiar with compared to lucid dreaming, because this is the experience, this is the concept I have the most experience based off of. I've been astral projecting actively for, I don't even, I can't even tell you how many years at this point. And it's during this time that I've actually 
been utilizing astral projecting to connect to different deities, to connect to various of my spirit guides throughout the years, and just to learn from them and to hear their stories and hear their guidance. I also had the extremely surreal opportunity where back in the day, back during my cult days, I like to say, darling, uh, where I was actually able to time astral projecting with a friend that I had in the cult of the time and we were able to leave our physical bodies during the night and be able to connect to one another and actually engage in conversation. And we were not only able to engage in conversation, we were able to connect with our spirit guides during this time and watch the interaction go down. From then after that night, uh, the very next day, we were able to continue the conversation as if nothing ever happened. It would be no different if you and I were to have a coffee today and then we were gossiping about the dramas in our lives. And then we said our goodbyes to each other. And then the next day we call up on the phone and then we continue that conversation without having to be there to be any type of reminding because we just experienced it yesterday. The act of astral projecting is something that many people also uh, are interested in going into, but it's also the concept that a lot of people are intimidated by. Uh, this is because of a lot of the fears that Hollywood has presented and spiritual gatekeepers have also added when it comes to astral projecting, which truthfully, that could be a video in and of itself, is addressing all the myths and the fears that people would add or associate to astral projecting. Truthfully, I probably should do another video on that just in and of itself. If you don't believe me, a quick example of this where Hollywood really adds such a fear factor to astral projecting. If you ever watch the movie Insidious, darling, it's similar in that sense. Here's the gag, darling. The US government actually has confirmed that astral projecting is something that is real, something that can be tested upon and experimented with. I even link it down in the description box below if you don't feel like doing that extra work. So what makes the two separate, darling? I believe that both of these concepts are not even remotely comparable for me personally, because when you think about it, for your brain in the act of you dreaming, well, yes, both you lucid dreaming as well as you astral projecting, you are no longer, they share the similarity in the sense that you are no longer functioning off of the limitations of that we are experiencing right now, the physical limitations. But what makes Astral projecting separate from lucid dreaming is the sense that for lucid dreaming, I pointed out that it's a physical experience for a reason earlier, because the dream itself that you're experiencing is still a controlled environment that is reliant on your brain giving you this induced experience. While yes, you're not guaranteed to be lucid every time, that's a skill in of itself, that's a muscle that you have to work at in of itself, you are still functioning because of this off the limitations no longer of the physical 3D limitations, but off the limitations from your brain. Uh, so, and because your brain is only able to conceptualize things that they've experienced that you personally have experienced in the physical 3D world, your brain, well, is able to be a lot more creative. Yes, you're able to fly around, but what it is that you are going to be experiencing and able to conceptualize in this dream state is only what it is that you personally are able to imagine. So you're functioning off of your own brain's limitations. How many times can I say limitations, darling? Whereas compared to astral projecting, you are only functioning off of the limitations, the, I suppose, energetic limitations of whatever realm that you're currently in. This is why it's so easy for the US government to actually confirm and do a lot of experiments, a lot of testing with astral projecting because you could have controlled experiments, for example, as what they did before where they had one individual write down a number and put it under a book while the other individual was in a completely different Different room and they were able to astral project, see what, what number was written under the book, come back to their body and say what number it was. This is why I was able to have that shared astral projecting experience with my friend at the time many years ago and was able to come back and for us to both continue on the conversation. While I'm not saying this is not possible for lucid dreaming, I'm only able to speak about my own personal experiences and I couldn't find any actual confirmed documentation on lucid dreaming to the extent that you could and that you could for astral projecting. I'm not saying it's not possible, I just could not find any reliable information. Now, I did state earlier, it's during the lucid dreaming state, that is when beings, your ancestors, guardian angels, and all that could still reach you easier. And this is true. It's during this time that your brain, that you are in this controlled environment during your brain, right? Because when you think about it, this is when your brain is in its most 
receptive stage, right? And so it's a lot easier for spirit guides or what have you to bring forward messages and to relay messages to you because you're in this very much open uh, state where anything is possible, right? For example, that's how I met my spirit guide for the first time was through lucid dreaming. And I was able to be in my dream completely irrelevant, but I saw my spirit guide as a starfish. And I knew that it was my spirit guide because it felt different from everything else in the dream. Because when I honed in on that starfish, that was when I became lucid and I just felt something. So my spirit guide, you know, any type of being that you're connecting with, they still, they're able to reach you, but they have to function off of your own physical uh, limitations still, your brain's physical limitations. At the time, they couldn't do anything more than just being a starfish because I was of a young age at that time. So I hope this all makes sense. I'm not trying to dismiss lucid dreaming and the experiences of lucid dreaming and say they're not spiritual because there are many cultures that, including the, my own practices, that include dream work. But I am trying to say that lucid dreaming and astral projecting should not even be in the same conversation. I could go into much further detail about both of these concepts Concepts, admittedly a lot more into astral projecting than lucid dreaming so if you guys are interested in hearing about that let me know in the comments below now remember darling I did not create this YouTube channel I do not do these videos to have an echo chamber I'm just simply sharing my experiences sharing my perspective and how I process things but that does not mean I'm speaking of this as only the fact the be all I want to create a conversation let's have a dialogue in the comments below tell me your opinion tell me your experiences tell me your views tell me your definition on things right let's start a conversation but be sure to be polite about it darling we can we're all adults here let's be civil bye girl